the endoscopic endonasal approach to cellar tumors that extend into the cavernous sinus requires a comprehensive knowledge of relevant surgical anatomy. These tumors are approached through the lateral space of the sphenoid sinus, contained within the body of the sphenoid bone. Understanding the anatomy of the region is critical to performing safe surgery for these tumors. The critical anatomical structures are the internal carotid artery, cranial nerves V1, V2, and 6, the optic system, and the pituitary gland. This presentation focuses on pituitary tumors that grow into the cavernous sinus, encase the carotid artery, and displace the sixth cranial nerve laterally. The nasal mucosa is prepared in a standard fashion by removing the inferior half of the middle turbinates, a corridor through which instruments and the endoscope can maneuver is created bilaterally. A pedicled septal mucosal flap is elevated and placed into the nasopharynx. A posterior septostomy is performed so as to allow all access to the surgical site by either nasal passage. Next, the sphenoid rostrum is removed by expanding the natural ostia or by direct midline route. Prior to removing the sphenoid septa, the relation to the internal carotid arteries and optic nerves are carefully noted. The sphenoid mucosa is incised with a dissector, grasped and freed from the bone with alligator forceps and kept in situ. As we enter the sphenoid, the cella tursica and clibus are in the midline. Superiorly lie the optic nerves and laterally, the internal carotid arteries. The maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve can occasionally be seen more laterally. Tumor growth may cause distortion of these landmarks. The bone of the cellar floor is opened and elevated to expose the dura as laterally and superiorly as possible. If the tumor extends lateral to the carotid, this can be done in more than one maneuver. After a stellate incision in the dura, the dura is carefully dissected from the tumor and expanded pituitary. The pseudoplane between the tumor and the pituitary is dissected with a round knife and the midline tumor debulked using curettes and suction. After confirming the location of the internal carotid by neuronavigation, Doppler ultrasound, and direct vision, the dura is incised over the cavernous sinus. The tumor is then removed from the cavernous sinus using a series of angled curettes and suction. With the tumor successfully removed, the primary portion of the procedure is complete.